Hi everyone, my name is Dr. Mike Todorovic and in this video I'm going to talk to you about the pharmacokinetic and pharmacodynamic changes that occur for the older person. Let's first define the two terms. Pharmacokinetics simply is the way the body alters the drug and pharmacodynamics is the way the drug alters the body. When we look at pharmacokinetics there's four phases you need to be aware of. That's absorption, distribution, metabolism and excretion. And there's various factors that can alter these particular phases and these are the factors we need to take into consideration because they're slightly different for the older person. Let's first start with absorption. This is the movement of the drug from the site of administration into the circulation. Now we're going to exclude topical drugs here because they get applied directly to the target tissue and we're going to exclude IV because they're directly injected into the bloodstream. So we're going to focus here predominantly on drugs that are ingested orally because we know they need to move through various cell layers and membrane barriers in order to get from the hollow lumen, the hollow inside of the gut into the circulation. So factors you need to take into consideration here that can affect absorption it includes gastric emptying, motility of the gut, the surface area of the gut, and the way the drug can move through the cells either through diffusion or various active processes. Now how are they different for the older person? All right. Gastric emptying for the older person is actually slower. There's a reduced movement of products through various phases of the GIT. Motility is reduced for the older person as well. Surface area is predominantly unchanged for the older person. And then when we look at, so this is important, when we look at the hollow inside of the gut, the lumen, there's going to be cells that line the gut and then we're going to have the bloodstream. So it means that whatever drug gets ingested and moves through will need to be absorbed from the lumen into the cells, from the luminal side, then through the apical side into the circulation. So what we need to take into consideration here is the mechanism through diffusion, so just down a concentration gradient, predominantly dependent on the drug concentration, or active processes using pumps. So something really important here is there is an efflux transporter in the cells of your gut, which is called PGP. It's simply P glycoprotein and it's an efflux transporter. What that means is, what it does is, when the drug moves into the cells or the epithelia, it'll take that product and just throw it back into the lumen. Obviously this is going to reduce absorption, so PGP expression can reduce absorption. Now importantly, there's a number of important drugs like tricyclic antidepressants, SSRIs, SNRIs, anticonvulsants, antipsychotics that can both induce or increase and inhibit PGP. So this can alter the absorption rate of these particular drugs. Now this is important for the older person obviously because of polypharmacy and drug to drug interactions and the amount of drugs that they are on when it comes to anticonvulsants, antipsychotics, SSRIs, SNRIs and TCAs as well. So very important. A final point here for absorption when it comes to PGP is that its expression is reduced at the blood-brain barrier for the older person. That means if it's reduced, it's less likely to throw that drug back, the drug's more likely to cross the blood-brain barrier, and this may be one reason why the older person is more sensitive to drugs or to century, centrally acting compounds and toxins. All right, let's move through to distribution. The factors that affect distribution include blood flow. So distribution is the movement of the drug from the circulation to the tissues and cells and organs. So it has to do with blood volume, blood flow, various transport proteins like albumin and the body mass composition of the individual. So let's look at the older person. Blood volume, well we know that cardiac output, this probably goes in more so blood flow, but cardiac output is reduced for the older person. Blood volume is reduced in the older person, so by around about 8% for the older person. Blood flow is reduced. Transport protein, so serum albumin, is reduced, so le less protein to carry the drugs around. And body mass composition is significantly altered, so there's a significant increase in peripheral body fat by up to 35, an increase of 35% in peripheral body fat, and a decrease in lean muscle mass as well, which is really important. Another important point here for body composition is that the total body water is reduced. Reduced in total 
body water as well. Now what that means is this, you've got an increase in fat, decrease in water. So we know that drugs can be water soluble or fat soluble. And what this means is that there's going to be for the volume distribution of polar drugs, so water soluble drugs, the, vo the volume distribution of polar soluble drugs is reduced because there's less total body water. The volume distribution for lipophilic drugs, fat soluble drugs, is increased. So this is really important because we know that drugs are either going to be lipophilic or polar. So this is going to be lipophilic, has increased. Really important. Let's now have a look at metabolism. So metabolism is going to be an enzyme dependent process of turning the drug into some sort of metabolite and it can be either active or inactive. And keep in mind that this metabolic processes, this alteration of the drug is predominantly to produce a metabolite that can be excreted. That's what the body wants to do. And so how do we predominantly excrete it? Through the kidneys, so it needs to be a polar molecule water soluble. So keep all that in mind. And most of the metabolism happens at the liver. So it can happen at the kidneys, brain, uh, lungs, skin, but predominantly happens at the liver. So what needs to be taken into consideration here? Blood flow to the liver and clearance at the liver. So these are the two major processes. So firstly, liver blood flow, significantly reduced for the older person. It's reduced by 20 to 50% hepatic blood flow. What else? Reduction in liver mass, hepatic mass, is reduced. When we look at liver clearance, here we're talking about enzymes, and a good chunk of these enzymes are part of the SIP family. That can include cytochrome P450. These enzymes are important with what we call xenobiotic metabolism, so they detoxify potentially toxic compounds, and we know that SIP and its family can be reduced in the older person. All right, moving from metabolism to excretion, this is now getting rid or clearing the drug and its metabolites. This happens predominantly through the kidneys, so renal excretion, and is primarily dependent on glomerular filtration rate. So glomerular filtration rate is important to understand because it's significantly reduced in older people. So by the time you're 80 years of age, it's reduced by about 50%. By the time you're 80 years of age, you've lost around about 60% of your glomeruli, the filtration subunits. So we need an appropriate measure of GFR. We know that creatinine is a common measure of GFR, but we now know that for the older person, their lean muscle mass is reduced. So maybe another alternative measure of GFR is needed in order to appropriately know the clearance of these drugs for the older person. Now the last thing I want to finish on is the pharmacodynamics, the way that the drug alters the body. And this is important. It has to do with all these things we've spoken about because we know that the older person has a reduced physiological reserve, their ability to be able to cope with change. So there's a reduction in tissue perfusion and blood volume and mass of organs, like the brain mass reduces 5% every decade after 40 years, a reduction in neurotransmitters, receptor density, um, receptor affinity, all these things change and the drug itself can alter it as well. So for example, a drug that's going to bind to a receptor and have its effect, an older person is going to have a, it's going to take a longer time for them to rebound back from any metabolic perturbations. So remember, keep all the pharmacokinetic and pharmacodynamic changes that the older person has in mind.